Hi guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you're looking for an active worm farming community, you're in the right place. I am all about utilizing my worms to use up my household waste and also to make good compost. This video is all about me using my love of science to discover the answers to common questions and debunk worm farming myths. First of all, we are going to look at my weight bin. This bin started out as a question from one of my viewers. They wanted to know how much did it take as far as food and bedding inputs to get X amount of worm castings. How much food did they need to have available? So I didn't know the answer to that question, so I started this experiment. I started this bin with one pound of worms, and I had been weighing all of the inputs and also uh, checking the weight before I start every day to see what's evaporated or off-gassed since the last time that we have looked in on the bin. Now, if you're not new here, you can look at this bin and see that uh, it looks like it's been rummaged through. And that is because Anne did not have her readers on when she was doing the video and didn't notice that this was on burst and not video. I'm human. I'm also a human that can't see good up close. What I'm going to let you in on is that the bin weighed 24.3 pounds when I got it. This good thing I write things down too. 24.3 pounds to begin with. Then I went and fed them four Count them four mushy, frozen bananas there and a couple of other random things from the kitchen like onions and avocado peels. And then I also gave them two handfuls of my prepared bedding. And then I covered them back up, weighed everything, and it was currently still is 28.5 pounds. Okay, well, I will put the metric version down below as well as the graph of what we have added and lost over the course of the last eight months eight or nine. All right, hang on. Let me go get the no grit bin where there's an actual video of it. Okay, here we are at the no grit bin. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but it is overrun with fruit flies. I thought I had gotten rid of them, but it appears that this is where they have been hiding. So I'm going to get them their own dedicated gnat trap. So let me go grab that to get it close by so they can start getting into it. So my gnat traps are just uh, any old uh, kind of a drink bottle of any kind. You put a cup of water and a cup of vinegar and one drop of dish soap. You cut the lid off, put it upside down, and when they crawl in there, then they can't get back out because they can't fly straight up. They have to fly diagonally. So when they go in there, they're done. So in uh, October of last year, I started with 100 cocoons and I fed them kitchen scraps and shredded paper and basically they have been going for that whole time. So every worm that you see in here comes from those 100 cocoons. So let's see how they're doing. Been about three or four weeks since we've looked on, in on these guys. And let's see what we've got other than a crap ton of fruit flies. So we got some good sized worms in there. So the, ooh, okay. They did not eat their food, need not eat all of their food. So, huh. I am seeing a lot of cocoons though. Right here in this onion peel, there's two really good size, three really good sized cocoons in there. So maybe I overestimated how much food they needed last time. And that does happen. That's just part of being a worm farmer. Or the kind of food I gave them was not good enough as far as fast food versus slow food. So ugh, lessons are learned. Obviously not perfect, but it looks like whatever I fed them last time, which is not, it might be banana, I'm not sure. But what I am going to do is uh, one of the things that people ask me the most is if you find that your bin is overrun with bugs and, wow, look at the size of that cocoon. So they're breeding like nuts in here. There's just not enough of them to take care of the food that I put in here or it's too hard of a food for them to eat without help. So let me get them a lot more bedding here to mix in 
I'm not going to feed them. I thought I was gonna feed them today, but they clearly have enough food, but what they need is more bedding to give them more volume. And uh, being that the paper that I give them is prepared, then it'll be something that they can eat fairly quickly. So let me go get that bedding. Okay, so I have quite a big batch here of the bedding to give them, and hopefully this will give them something to uh, eat on while they're waiting for that food to become available, and also perhaps smother out some of the uh, fruit flies that are currently plaguing this bin. So that was probably about a gallon of the prepared bedding, which is 80% shredded paper and cardboard and about 20% coconut coir, with a little bit of liquid kelp in order to get it degrading before I give it to the worms. So as far as I can tell, the worms are doing well without the, the grit. However, uh, due to a mistake of my own, and I do show you my mistakes as well as my success, um, I overfed them last time, which resulted in bugs. Even this far along in my path of being a worm farmer, I still make errors. So, if you like the experimental worm bins, they do have their own playlist, which I will link right over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like that video over there. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.